it's time to start my next project so I'll just put some black on this bit of aluminium and then scribe a line. No! Don't use the calipers! That's bad! Bad, bad person! Don't use them! So, being a good little machinist, I'm not going to use the calipers. I'm going to make a scribe. And, of course, all good machinists start with a detailed plan. So I've drawn that out, and I've got some materials that I'm going to use. As you can see, I'm going to make the scribe out of aluminium and brass. And I'm going to use a piece of TIG tungsten for the scribe itself. The TIG tungsten is nice and hard. It sharpens to a butte point, and stays sharp pretty well. So, let's start on the body. Yes, cutting aluminium is creating a lovely little bird's nest. If anyone knows how to stop this happening, just let me know. Time to stop and do a measure. And now I can put my measurement in, put my required value in, and then I can just follow the DRO to get the required diameter. With the diameter achieved, I'm just using a button end tool to put a lovely smooth concave on the inside of the body. There we go, that'll do. Of course there's going to be a shaft right through the middle of the body. So it's just a matter of centering up and then drilling right through. A nice chamfer on the end almost looks like it's been done by a professional. I've turned the body around in the lathe now and I'm cutting it off to length. Sadly my cut off tool doesn't have the depth to cut this right through. What a poo! Oh well, I guess it's out with the old hacksaw. I'm almost finished with the body and the lathe. I've turned it around again, because I'm going to do a knurl now.
excellent. A perfect knurl. I wasn't happy with the 10mm aluminium that I put out for the shaft, so I'm just turning down something that's a little bit bigger diameter. A lovely slip fit, very satisfying. The TIG tungsten is going to go right through this and I'm going to use a grub screw to hold it in place. So I'm just drilling out for an M5 grub screw. Thumb screws next. Brass cuts beautifully, but it does leave a mess. All those fine chips. The grub screw is an M6, but I've got a little 4mm nubbin on the end of it that will go into the channel that I'm going to cut into the shaft. Well, that's all the lathe work. Now it's time to set it up for the mill. The big disadvantage of having a combination lathe and mill is that every time I want to use the mill, I've got to take the lathe tool off, put the vise in, and then tram the vise. Fortunately, it doesn't take all that long. A couple of tappy tap taps with the hammer, and we've got it near enough, I reckon. So once it's tightened up, I'll just give it another check just to be sure to be sure. Yep, that looks good. Moving on. I'm going to put a flat on one face of the body and then I need to um, tap a hole for the thumb screw that will hold the shaft in place. Anyway, first off, let's just find the centre. And this takes just a little bit of patience. And I usually do it a couple of times just to make sure. There we go, got it. So I can zero that. Put the center find around the other side and then use the half function to get the center. Nice. Right, so using the half function, now I've got the center. I can move the Y to zero, which will give me the center. Now I've got the center. 
I'm just going to guess where I want to put the thumb screw. It's not particularly critical. So there will do. I'm using a 5mm drill for a 6mm thread. Time for the actual shaft itself. Now, because I'll be putting a TIG tungsten through this, I want the, the TIG tungsten to be oriented the same way all the time. So, after I drill the hole for the tungsten, I want to put a channel in the top of this as well that the thumb screw will um, centre down into and hold it in place. I'm going to mill a 4mm wide channel that the end of the thumb screw will go down into and stop the shaft rotating. Okay, that's done. Nice little channel, but I need to take the burrs off. I'm going to put some little divots around the outside of the thumb screw using the bolt circle function on the DRO. So first I'll need to do is find the centre. Now I've got the centre, I can go over to the DRO and use the bolt circle function. So you just go through and answer the questions. What's the diameter? I want it to be 30 mil. Number of holes, six, yep. Starting angle zero, ending angle 300. And it tells me where to go for the first one. So all I have to go do is go zero, zero and we'll be in place to drill the first hole. With the first hole drilled, just go to the second hole. It puts the coordinates in you just zero the x and y axis, drill a second hole, etc, etc.
I'm using a 10mm diameter 2 flute end mill for this. The thumb screw is not held all that securely so I'm just taking my time and taking a little bit at a time to get that little divot in without everything going to poof. Last divot is done. Those six little divots will make it nice and easy to use the thumb screw. Now, with all the pieces made, it's time to assemble. The thumb screw screws into the body, and the shaft goes into the body in the right place. Now that I can screw the thumb screw down in and into the channel, so now the shaft can't rotate. So now I can put the little grub screw in the end, which will hold the TIG tungsten in. Rightio then, now I can use my calipers correctly just for measuring, not for scratching marks on material. Although to be fair, th these are only $20 calipers. If I could afford a Sterrett or a Mitutoyu, I'd be much more inclined to use the Scribe. Well, I think we can call that a success. But one scribe line's never enough, so let's do a few more. That was a nice, easy, but satisfying project. I know it's only made out of aluminium, but I reckon that's strong enough. It doesn't need to be made out of steel or stainless or something like that. This will be another tool to add the, to the collection. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.